Hello, folks. Brandon, this is Brandon Chapman for another video uh, for Monday, March 27th, 2023. Um, boy, the S&P looks like it's about, we're about 30 minutes before the market closed right now. Looks like we're pushing towards, you know, the middle of the session at the moment, but uh, we're certainly coming off lows. This is the E-mini S&P 500 index. Um, notice that we kind of held on to the 3950 level uh, on Friday. We rallied towards the high of the session. We're moving higher today. Looks like we're May, March higher towards the next level of 4075. Do we have a shot at 4200? Absolutely. Uh, but the, the, the title today session is how energy and financials are leading but there's a flight to quality that is underway or has begun. So as we look at the top performing sectors so far today, you'll see financials and energy at the top of this list. Buried in the middle, we've got healthcare, we got staples, utilities down here up about a third of a percent. If we look back over the last week, you'll see that uh, um, energy is topping the list because of today's performance largely, but uh, lurking in the middle here. Um, with the exception of utilities. But again, looking at staples being one of those areas and healthcare, we may start to see a bit of rotation um, as we move forward here. But the flight to quality is really what we're discussing, um, as well as some unusual option activity across a number of stocks that kind of represent the disparity in quality out there. All right, well, let's get rolling. So uh, the AES today is up, the VIX. Well, the VIX right now is down and uh, near the low of the session. Now, the question is, well, is the VIX low right now at 20, or is it poised to go lower? And this is where, you know, we just came off an event, and yes, it was an event, right? Bank failures, the beginning of this kind of liquidity crisis that's playing out right now, and, of course, the eventual um, solvency crisis, right? Because at the end of the day, uh, the recession is virtually assured, right? Is it absolute? No. But there are a lot of indications, you know, Disney laying off 7,000 employees, and they're going to lay off more. A lot of companies laying off right now. It looks like, you know, potential uh, um, spending really hit the wall um, with the failure of SIVB. People fearful may pull back on spending, and that certainly impacted um, the price of, of stuff. For example, like the price of oil, the outlook, although oil is kind of bouncing higher here today. But oil took it on the nose at the same time. The outlook for the economy is diminishing. And as a function, I mean, certain sectors should perform better than others. But as we're coming to this realization, as the Fed is reaching kind of that terminal phase of their rate hiking cycle, we're going to start to see the impact of that policy really begin to take hold. And where would you see it more than just the economy and economic growth? But if we circle back here to the S&P, we saw the event that drove the market high, drove the market lower and the VIX higher. But the realities of what happened in the market, it was fairly muted. We didn't we didn't see it into uh, spread broadly or evenly across all sectors. And so as a function, some stuff performed better than other stuff. And if you look over here in the last 3 weeks, staples have remained positive. And today, we're actually breaking out of a little consolidation phase, near term, about 74. Could we potentially even get back to 77? It certainly seems like a very real possibility. But the thing is, we can get distracted by saying, well, yeah, but Bank of America is up 5% today. Citigroup's up 4%. Um, JP Morgan up 3.4%. Is it possible these names can rally? Yes. But the problem is, do you want to step in with your hard-earned investment dollars and put it to work here in a bet that the financial crisis is over? Well, the reality, if we look at KRE, you'll see that KRE is the regional bank. This is the source of part of the source of the problem is that if the market really expected that the solution being provided by the Treasury in conjunction with the Federal Reserve was in place, these companies should be really popping here. And they're not. In fact, KRE is only up 1.5% today and fading from today's high. And so the reality is we're not out of the financial kind of the financial crisis. We're just in the beginning. We're in the outset. And you're going to have periods where there's going to be a little bit of respite. And we may have a chance for banks to grind higher. But we know the bigger picture. We know the end game is that we're going to start to see if layoffs keep continuing, 
we're going to start to see more more default type uh, uh, reception, and, and it's going to create downside potential. So do you want to bank on these areas? Probably not, right? The idea is that we're looking more for a flight to quality and areas where money's flowing into or there's indication of, again, by virtue of option activity um, kind of outlook. So if we kind of look beyond the financials in here, you'll see IBM, for example. Um, we look in here again, we kind of Exxon's up a little bit today. Well, that's with energy. Uh, could Exxon continue to move higher? Sure. Does that play into the economic outlook? No. But, you know, oil's pretty oversold and we're catching a bid today. But if we keep looking beyond energy, you'll see some tech names like an Oracle. Oracle pays a dividend, 40 cents, just raised the 40 cents, previously 32 cents. We go to the trade tab in here, it's a 1.77% yield. Not extremely high, but it's something, right? We look at, uh, for example, Target. You know, Target's, you know, a little bit more of a defensive name, right? Today, there was bullish option activity in Target. Um, look beyond American Express, right? Go to Proctor, uh, sorry, Philip Morris catching a bid today. This company does pay a dividend, about 5.5%. So the flight to quality, Walmart, up 2% today. Had a little congestion phase for about a week. We're breaking out of that today. If we look at volume, we're probably a bad average, okay? And so when you start to look beyond AT&T, a 1.64 or 6% up today. Comcast, right? Um, CVX, KHC, Kraft Heinz breaking out of it. it's a little congestion face here too. So the idea is, is there maybe more of a flight to quality if we look beyond the surface? And I would argue, yes, right? There's a look for a little bit of a dividend. You know, United Healthcare pays one $1.65. That amounts to about a 1.37% yield. Not exactly a company you're buying for the yield specifically, but you're buying it, you know, again, because it is more of a, a defensive part of the market. And so this is kind of the focus of what we're what I'm seeing today in the broader market. While it's not necessarily leading the way today, it is quietly up. And we look at the S&P 100, a lot of those names are really performing today. And we are seeing some option activity in the space. Now, this flight to quality is also in the bond market. Now, if you look at treasuries, uh, the 10-year treasuries come down quite a bit. Now, we are seeing a little bit of a sell-off today in the 10-year. Uh, why did we come down? Because we're changing our expectation of where the Fed funds rate is going to be. So, yeah, we're getting a little bit of a sell-off today, but let's look at the trend. So, if we look at, for example, IEF, this is 7 to 10-year treasury um, ETF, it's performed very well. We're pulling back today. Another is called HYG. Well, HYG is a, it's a um, corporate junk bond or high yield bond ETF. You've got LQD. This is a corporate investment grade bonds. And if we kind of bring this into the mix, we can see, well, which is outperforming? And so we look at HYG and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do a ratio compared to IEI. So if you look at duration, meaning, you know, how responsive is HYG to interest rate changes? IEI, how responsive is IEI to interest rate changes? They are similar if you go to their, their respective uh, um, uh, um, fund manager pages, they're similar in duration, okay? So the idea is that the ratio, which is really this yellow line. So if the line goes down, what does this tell us? It says HYG is underperforming IEI. What that means is the perception of the risk in HYG is increasing. Okay. And so back here, HYG is doing better than IEI. The risk spread of the perception of risk is decreasing. This means that the spread is increasing and the perception of risk is increasing. Look at what's happened. In fact, I did a session back here towards the highs where I discussed looking for risk spreads to widen. And then we started to see the dominoes begin to fall in with uh, regional banks. Uh, we looked at a lot of unusual option activity, <coughs> bearish activity in the regional banks on the 10th, looking for downside in companies like, for example, Bank of the Ozarks. This was back on this break right here, for example. Um, she was on the she was on the uh, the, the seventh or sorry eighth, right here. Um, KRE as well. 
there's a number of stocks that we're looking right here on the uh, the Fed when uh, Powell was talking before uh, his Congress before Congress on the seventh, and we began to look at the option activity uh, turning bearish on regional banks, and that really kind of led off that that major downturn. But if we go to back to HYG, you know we didn't necessarily see the sell off in high yield credit. What we saw was the flight to quality away from junk bonds and into, if we've looked at the yellow line here, away from junk bonds and into treasuries. Now, again, this is a representative of a flight to quality. If we look at uh, uh, LQD, now a better uh, better duration match is uh, IEF. So LQD plus IEF. Notice again right here, the rotation, the flight to quality of treasuries over corporate investment grade bonds. And so this flight to quality, again, is happening in the stock market as well. Looking for dividends, better balance sheets, um, defensive sectors, that kind of thing. Okay. And so as we look at an example today, let's just bring up a Target since I bring up brought up the list. Uh, Target's catching a little bit of a bid today at 2.27%. If we go to the trade tab on tar Target, just to give an example here, I don't um, just to give you an example here on Target, this is for this week. So I don't like you know, the, week, the short weekly stuff. This does create some gamma, but calls being bought on the out of the money, out of the money option at 162.50. So again, we have a level near term projection per, per se, 162.50. Basically about where the stock is right now, just a slightly higher. But if we catch, if we start to break above that, can it create a little bit of gamma? Could we see in the next week or two a push back toward prior high at 180? Again, you know, there's probably work that needs to be done technically. Um, but uh, but again, we start to break out of this channel. We're looking at probably a retest of 180 up here. So does Target start to play catch up with Walmart? Well, it's possible, right? Walmart's ripping today. We're towards the high of the session. Near term 147.50, we break that. We're looking at this thing probably getting back to about 154, 155. So again, we could see a rotation back to department stores, um, or, or stores like uh, um, you know, sell food and that kind of stuff. Again, more defensive oriented. But also, we're seeing a flight to quality in terms of gold, and gold's one of those things that it's down today as the dollar is strengthening. But we began to really look at this in my sessions back on the 27th of February, seeing option activity going long gold and then repeated as we began to surge in here. So this has been kind of a theme of mine. Um, in fact, Don put an in-out spread on Friday, looking at a little bit of upside to 157 here in gold in the coming weeks. So is gold going down today as a result of a stronger dollar? Sure. Right, but it doesn't mean it's over yet. In fact, as we look beneath the surface of gold, you can see some uh, some uh, option activity here. Now, this is something where you got to kind of track it in in order to uh, um, to be able to make sense of this. And it's actually sorry, it was for June expiration. Today, what you're seeing is there's twenty thousand. This was a spread out here. Uh, buying the uh, uh, the 200 and selling the 220. Now, last Wednesday, there were 40,000 contracts mostly bought of this 200 and 40,000 contracts sold of the 220. The indication was this was bought and that was sold, adding to the already existing long call vertical at 200, 220. So my, ex my thought is this is a spread that's in addition to what, what I discussed last Wednesday during my session, and if I clear this filter out, um, you'll see this kind of 84011 all sent off at the exact same time, split in two different trades here as a spread, buying the 200 and selling the 220. Buying the 200, selling the 220. This is filling between the market, but that is the expectation. So the idea here, buying the 200, again, 220 down here at 1055.37. So what we're seeing is, an additional spreads being put on today, targeting what? Targeting 220 in gold. Now, this is not going to happen tomorrow, but this happens as the Fed begins to pivot from raising rates to cutting rates. 
What is that going to do to the dollar? Yeah, at that point, if they start to cut rates, could we see a pop in financial? Sure, but we're probably square in the midst of a recession, and gold should show strength, even more strength than what we currently have seen in gold over the last few weeks and over really over the last um, the last uh, since the fall back here. So we're kind of nearing resistance levels, but near term we could retest expectations. We may break out here. And there are big trades being put on right now in the gold space expecting just that. And it's not just happening in gold. Um, in fact, it's happening in gold stocks. You know, stocks like, for example, IAG. Um, this is one I talked about last week where there's bullish option activity. In fact, last week I had won over a number of trades, GOLD, GLD, SVM, uh, Wheat and Precious Metals, WPM. This was last Monday. Um, looking at some Pan American Silver, PAS, looking at some move movement higher in gold. But like I said, um, the, the origin of all this bullish activity began on the 27th. But on Friday, it was kind of a new stock popped up. And again, not a new stock necessarily to those who know gold, but a new one more recently with option activity. And you see IAG trading at the highs of the session today. In this case, this is a September Six dollar, um, six dollar strike out here. Twelve thousand contracts trade, mostly bought against five thirty six. If you look at the time and sales here, notice how we're trading basically in uh, in a couple of prints in here. You know, uh, at you know huge clips uh, for this September expiration. There's a, a five dollar out there for for nineteen gen as well. But point being is that there's buying activity in uh, options, buying call options in gold stocks. Also KGC. Um, there's a couple of trades last week in KGC that's continuing today for this August expiration. Now with these, they're out there a little bit in time. And so there's not a lot of gamma, you know, meaning that, you know, that, that positive feedback loop as the eight moves closer to the money, these are decently far to the money and a lot of time. So the Delta is not going to change a lot, but it is representative of continued money flow into the gold space laying it out there for summer, for fall, thinking again, there's going to be maybe some sort of pivot and the gold prices may remain higher. Um, and these stocks may have a chance of, of shooting up again to six bucks here on Kinross Gold. So don't take your eyes here off the, off the gold ball. Gold is down today, but the dollar may reverse its trend, especially if we're not seeing any sort of immediate crisis beginning to build. And uh, the immediate crisis um, as we look at the S&P, this is the SPY, for example. Um, we've been testing this level. There was a large print, uh, 1.4 million shares sold at 399.03. Um, that was back here on January 24th. And this has been a resistance level over the last basically week. If we can start to break this out, again, we may see further rotation to bearish names, the dollar's probably going to weaken. Gold may have a chance to move higher. And again, this is kind of what we're looking for. Um, but again, that rotation towards more defensive names. Again, you'll see stuff in there. Um, you know, bullish activity Netflix today and uh, um, Roku. But the idea is that, you know, more defensive posturing is probably better. Now, the reason why I say that the, the likelihood of selling off is probably more muted is because I've been waiting to see that return of hedgers, meaning buying 30-day volatility. And we got that right here in mid-March along with the banking crisis, the regional bank crisis. So the thing is, we've already had kind of a hedging event here. And in fact, as you look at SKU, SKU has been rising. So this, you know, VIX going up is largely due to buying puts. SKU is more measured, meaning you're, you're buying puts and selling calls. You don't move the VIX as much. Um, but we saw SKU really picking up here as the market sold off. We came back down. The last couple of days, it's been increasing. We're pretty high up here to around 127. So when you start to get these events around 130 or higher, what you start to see is that, you know, again, there's a significant amount of hedging. So as a function, is there a desire to really want to sell the market? The answer is no. What that means is money repositions itself within the market if they're not going to sell. And certainly we've seen selling of financials selling of regional banks. Some of it's gone towards technology. Technology has one of, been one of the better performers in the last three weeks, along with communications. But is that going to hold up 
if a recessionary backdrop continues to build, again, that's my case for going more towards staples, healthcare, probably utilities on the margin, especially if yields start to come down or remain lower, we're probably not going to see the 10-year break 3.4% unless we really begin to see the Fed uh, looking to start to cut rates. And so that may take a little while, but utilities could be a defensive play bottoming down here. You know, maybe have a chance to run to, to $69, $70. So again, keep your, um, keep your eyes here. But technology has probably run, run its course as far as that early rotation out of out of financials towards technology, you know, there are opportunities potentially to look to short. In fact, uh, a Don sent out a, a, a bearish and outspread last week on Meta, basically looking for this thing just to come in a little bit, right? Hit that 30% uh, uh, return on risk, maybe 55% if it doesn't happen quickly. But if we see another down day, this is a trade that could, you could get out of potentially. Um, given where it's at right now at about 203, you know, if you go to the trade tab and you're, you know, again, you could do a, a buy one in the money, sell one out of the money. Uh, we could go out 28 April, for example. This is what's called an in out spread. Could you buy a 205 and sell a 200? Right? You're buying 52% implied volatility, selling 53% implied volatility. So the idea is if you can get into that for 250 or less, it's got decent pricing. You just need this thing to pull back below 200. Or if, uh, if it happens in a few days, if we pull back towards you know, 194, 193, you might have a chance to get out of a 30% gain in a few days. So again, looking for technology to probably start to weaken here, further positioning within the defensive parts of the market. Um, IBM, now this is a technology name, but it's also a dividend payer. It's more oversold, big breakout today. And the bullish activity in IBM is centered on the uh, on the 31 March. So it's for this week, really close, 29,000 contracts traded, mostly bought at the 130 strike. If we can break through 130, this may engender even more buying potential and, and beginning to drive it up maybe towards 133. So, so possibly, again, a little bit overbought, but you could look at maybe a retracement back to 127.50 and look for a run at 130, breaking 130, again, pushing to about the 135 level. Um, this one's kind of out there, OLPX. So a lot of people are really familiar with a lot of the consumer staple space. So I'm not going to waste my time a lot going through like Colgate, Palmolive. This was a stock on Friday. I kind of highlighted as one of those stocks we, that are setting up pretty good technically that may have some run to about 77, break that area, maybe 80. Uh, but this is one that's a little bit below below the uh, um, below the radar for you. This company, if you look at the analyst tab here, what they do is they're, they're a beauty company, right? So a couple of stocks I talked about last week, Cody, um, C-O-T-Y, um, Elf. Um, these were companies that were, were industries that did really, really well. They're both in the beauty space. And then lo and behold, all of a sudden we get a beauty company today, OLPX, that's really been beaten down. And in my session today, I walked through how to search for unusual option activity by sector. And we found this in the consumer staples sector. And so we're setting up at this prior support. And the last run at this point, we got to move up to about 630. You know, we could maybe stretch to seven bucks. Um, the stock has very high short interest, about 16.5% as of a couple of weeks ago. Its short ratio is like five days, meaning that the amount of short interest amounts to about five days of average volume, sorry, uh, five times the daily average volume. Those are really impactful levels. And when you come in here and you look at today's trade, by starting with option statistics, 102 times the average for this time of day as we're heading into the close. 44% at the ask. And so a lot of buying interest coming in on the 21 April $4 strike. And so again, we'll come back here, you know, 7,400 contracts traded, mostly bought also at the $5 strike as well. And so we're seeing is a lot of buying. Now, is this potentially hedging by the shorts? Absolutely could be hedging by the shorts. Doesn't matter. The answer is no, right? This helps create that positive feedback loop as the option maker 
um, who probably is carrying a lot of this short calls, they have to hedge by going long stock. Now, this is certainly not the most, um, you know, the highest probability scenario, but it is a possibility and all of the mixings are there for a potential short squeeze or gamma squeeze that could push it here. So again, I thought that was an interesting setup with an oversold high short interest stock coupled with unusual option activity. It's not a bad combination to look for, um, you know, in, in, in any environment, but, uh, but again, those that's, that's one to kind of follow. Uh, another one is, uh, X at is T. Um, so AT and T there's more, but I thought these were the most interesting AT and T, you know, we're kind of coming off our lows high, slightly higher low, and we're looking at potentially making back some of what was lost uh, over this most recent downtrend. Near-term target, we're looking at probably about 1950. Well, the trade today in AT&T uh, was for a 6 April. So for next week, 13,000 contracts traded, mostly bought at the 19 strike. So again, it's basically about at the money. But again, if we start to break out, can it create the gamma squeeze as option makers have to hedge by going long stock, further creating this positive feedback loop, 1950, maybe 21. But we back this out further and you see, well, you know, shoot, I mean, 21, 22, you could set a 24 target, you know? And the idea is that you're trying to collect the dividend. Um, you know, the dividend's not amazingly secure because they previously cut it, but they're still paying about 5.88%. You can even buy some protection in here if you own the stock and uh, you know, even use that dividend to buy a put, probably not for 10 days. You'd probably come out here, you know, closer to 30 to 50. But uh the dividend is around what? Uh um a 27 cents. You could take the next dividend, hedge yourself for about three months out here to 16 June, and then you could you could buy a $17 put as protection, giving the right to sell the stock. So again, you could you could go out there, use the next dividend to be able to cover you. They do have earnings coming up, so that might be wise, but I thought AT&T is just a near-term play over the next few days. Could be kind of interesting um, coupled with the dividend. Um, finally, we'll kind of wrap it up XLI. So if we're talking about recessionary and more cyclical parts of the market, XLI is interesting. Rallied the last couple of days. We're kind of testing this resistance here, XLI. We're talking about a September expiration out of the money down here, um, buying the uh, buying the 90 and selling a, let's see my notes here, buying the 80 rather, <laughs> buying the 80 and, uh, and selling the 70 in here. So down here. So again, closing, these are probably adding to or maybe even closing it out. But I thought it was interesting. We're seeing that it could be a closing order, but the idea is maybe closing it out maybe adding to, are we looking at the possibility we could be stretching towards our lows at the moment? I probably should look at that a little bit more closely, but uh, you'll see in here, 1154, 43. So we got maybe a June roll from a 90 out to a 90, 80. Sorry, I had the strikes wrong. Buying the 90 put, selling the 80 put, um, selling the, you know, probably selling the June, buying the SEP 90, 80 in there as well. So the idea is, are we starting to, Look at downside 90 to about 80 bucks here in XLI. And if that's all we got for today, again, just look for that kind of rotation. If you're looking to go long opportunities, look for more non cyclical staples, um, a little bit of healthcare, um, utilities, you know, especially if you're seeing some breakout. Um, I usually look at Southern, you know, look at maybe gold potentially continuing its move here in the near term as we're reaching for and stretching for. Slightly higher prices, lower VIX until we're resetting for another bigger downside move. And then we'll catch you back next.